The bomb and the method feeder can be an absolutely fantastic way of putting nets of carp together in the winter. You join me today at the beautiful Bonehill Mill fishery in Tamworth where I'm hopefully going to show you how to approach this kind of fishing. One of the most important things when it comes to this kind of fishing is watch the water. As soon as you turn up to the fishery, make a conscious effort to get up to the lake and watch the water before you even pick where to fish. So if you see a showing fish, that's where you want to start off and try and catch that showing fish. So once you get to your peg and you want to start settling down, the first thing to do is decide how you're going to start off. So today, the water here is quite coloured for, for winter standards. Because of all the rain we've had lately, there's a stream coming in and it's put quite a lot of colour into the water. So although I think that the fish are going to want some bait today, I don't want to go gung-ho and film my pegging. So today I've chose to start on the bomb. This is quite an old fishery here today at Bonehill and the bottom can be quite rocky, silty. You don't really know what you're fishing over. So I've chose to start on a chod rig. So a chod rig basically is your main line runs down to, to your lead. But then normally people would put their hook length running off the lead. But what this is, it's basically a he helicopter style rig and it allows my, my bomb to go into the water and it trails behind my hook length. My hook length's trapped in two rubber beads and then it allows me to pop up a bait off the bottom or on the bottom and um, this gives you perfect presentation. When a fish comes up to the bait, picks it up and literally hooks itself straight away, it can't get away really with ejecting the bait. So that's my, my bomb set up. That's a fish up there. Just over to the right hand side of my peg, I saw a couple of fish just come out and crash on their side. And this tells me that it's fish that aren't really feeding. What they're doing, there's two types of shows that, that will happen. There's fish that come out vertical and then go back in vertical. And what these are doing, these are feeding fish. They've been feeding on natural bites in the silt and they're clearing their gills. And if a fish comes out and crashes on its side, that tells me it's just trying to clean off the leeches on it. I've picked a 12 inch hook length on the bomb and I've chosen a 12 mil white wafter. And what this has done, I've checked it in the water and it floated, it popped up with a size 12 hook on. So this is gonna be popped up off the bottom and it allows me to catch them fish that aren't really feeding. We had a decent start, I didn't catch a fish for about 40 minutes, but then we had a cracking little ghosty, absolutely stunning little fish, and put up a really nice fight. But after that, it got, it got a bit better, and we had a nice mirror carp, just out further to the left, and I was just chasing the shoal. So as I was casting, the shoal was moving further to the left, and to stay in touch with them, I just moved out to the left with them, and I've managed to catch a nice mirror carp and a couple of little commons. Another thing that you want to consider is just your bomb size. Try and keep that down to a minimum, really. I've been using a 21 gram bomb today, and that's enabled me to get right out to, to where I needed to get to. So 
what you want to do, you want to make sure that when your bait is on the wafter, when you run it along your hand, the hook flips over and sticks in your hand to simulate a fish's mouth. You will tend to find that the KKH will spin over and hook up a lot better than the, the MCM, what I've been using. However, like I just said, that circle hook, once it goes in that bottom lip, which is where you want it, they don't tend to come out. So they're the hooks that I like to use. So what I've tried to do today is really manage the shoulder fish that I'm on. So you need to control the shoulder fish. Don't let them control you. So for instance, when the fish have been in front of me, I'm not gonna directly cast onto that, onto that fish. Try and put it by it, but put it to the right of it. So the fish move, if you want the fish to move left, put your, your line to the right of the fish. So that's going to manipulate the fish to move left further into your peg and vice versa if the fish was over to the left try and cast on the left hand edge of the fish to manipulate them to move over to the right and that's exactly what's happened today. Once I felt that the bomb fish was running out it was time to then swap over to the method feeder. And the method feeders that I've selected to, to use is the ICS method feeders from Preston in 20 and 30 gram. So the reason I like to use quite a light method feeder is precisely because of what I said earlier, the silt. I don't want my method diving too far into the silt, although I'm not too bothered if it does go slightly into the silt, because the way carp are designed, the barbules on a carp are designed so they can feed in silt. Carp won't hesitate to bang their head straight in the silt and find out your method feeder. Although I would try and keep it as far on top of the silt as possible. And that 20 gram method feeder really allows me to do that. So running down through the method feeder, I've got a Guru x -Safe stem. These aren't designed to fit in these method feeders. Although I've been using these for quite a few years now and they're absolute bang on when elastic method feeders are allowed. Running down, we've got 017 Preston power line, and that's four inch of that, down to a size 12 KKH. Quite a big hook, although we're using a wafter to counterbalance that hook. The, the wafter itself is um, a seven mil orange wafter, and the, the bait I've chose to use on this method is pellets. I will always try and use pellets on the method feeder. I just think it works a lot better than ground bait. Although if I'm in really shallow water casting up to features, this is when I'd start thinking about ground bait. But in open water, fishing for carp, I'll always select to fish micros. Oh, and I think, I think, I think that one will be on. Yeah, so as I was saying, I'll always try and fish micros on the method. What I've done though with these is just add some green pellet soap to them just to make them less offensive and not stand out as much really. I think just that tinge of green really does give the fish a bit of confidence as it comes to that method. Another good thing to consider is just doing a bit of homework on the fishery you're going to. Today we're at Bone Hill and I know from experience that white wafters and orange wafters tend to be the best here. So they're the, they're the two that I've stuck to really. I've, I've tried a, a pale yellow one and I've I managed to nick a fish on that. But orange and white tend to be the number one colours. It's a nice, nice, it's popped off. 
Orange and white tend to be the colours here. That's a nice little mirror car. So a crucial part of this kind of fishing is a stopwatch. I don't do any fishing really without a stopwatch of some kind, whether that be roach, carp, bream, because it tells you so much. And today it's told me that the bites are gonna come between 10 minutes and 16. If I've left it out longer than 16 minutes, it's not gone round. So there's no point leaving it in 20, 30, 40 minutes because you're just wasting time. You might as well hit your 16 or give it an, a minute over, say 17, and then rechuck it out. But another good point I see people doing is having a bad chuck and just accepting it. When it's freezing cold like today, you want to be making sure every cast is perfect. You, you hit the clip, feather it down, and it goes in lovely. If it doesn't, don't be scared to just wind it back and have another chuck. And that is a cracking way to end a bomb and method feeder feature. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you on the next one.